When they were first discovered, they didn't claim to be Jews, they claimed to be Israelites. It's only in the last few hundred years that they've integrated themselves into the body of the world Jewish community. And the Bukharan Jews are important because they tip you off that the history of the lost tribes is a hidden history. That there are political reasons why their history would have been hidden. So for example, in Bukhara, in Uzbekistan, this country that was part of the former Soviet Union, anything Israelite was hidden and locked up because it was not in the interests of the local authorities to say that Israelites were here before the supposedly indigenous people. And in Bukhara, we actually had a guide who ran the Bukharan Museum who was torn between pursuing the truth and looking out for himself in a political climate where it's still policy to hide anything Israelite. So for example, he gave us access to the basement of the Bukharan Museum. On top in the museum you have all the official history and in the basement, locked up, you have anything Israelite. And what's in this musty, dank basement? Prayer books, silver platters with Hebrew alphabet on them, locked up. Torah scrolls, Bible scrolls are locked up as if they're some kind of state secret. Anything, anything with a Hebrew letter, anything signifying some kind of historical Israelite presence, locked up. And then when we asked him about Israelites, he didn't want to talk directly about Israelites, but he said, you know, there were these people here that ruled Central Asia for 200 years, and they were called Eftalites. From our recent digs, we've learned that in the 6th century, Bukhara was the capital of a mighty kingdom of Semites, which also ruled parts of India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Now, in the 19th century, the Russian writer Shubinsky believed that it was in this region that the Israelites were settled. But the people who ruled the area were called Heftalites. And right up to the present day, we are still debating the origins of the Heftali dynasty of Bukhara. Who are these Heftalites? Have you ever heard of Heftalites? Any Heftalites here? I don't want to offend anybody. Looking in the Britannica, and I found Heftalites. And what does the first line say? It says, this much-named and enigmatic tribe ruled Central Asia in the 5th and 6th centuries. Are we following here? Much-named, many names, and enigmatic, mysterious tribe. Now, why is a tribe that ruled Central Asia for 200 years mysterious? You'd think you'd get to know them after the first 100 years of rule. The second sentence was revelatory as well, because it says they were known to medieval writers as Ephtalites and Nephtalites. It seemed to us that the Nephtalites must have been the lost tribe of Naphtali, but we wanted some hard archaeological evidence. We went to the Tashkent Institute of Archaeology, where we gained access to a restricted facility containing a treasure of ancient artifacts. Among them, 2,200-year-old potsherds, clearly displayed on the ancient clay, is Aramaic script, the day-to-day -day language of the Israelite tribes. Here we also met Professor Usmanova, a semi-retired archaeologist. And what does she have? She has wrapped in a tea towel, wrapped in a tea towel, a 1,700-year-old 
religious ritual object with Hebrew writings, with an Israelite name, with ram's horns, a religious object of Israelite origin from exactly the area that the lost tribes went to a thousand years after they supposedly disappeared. Unbeknownst to most Israelis, the majority of Bukharan Jews have now emigrated to Israel. But the chain has been broken. They do not know that they may be descendants of the Nephtalites. They say that we are descendants of the lost tribes, but we don't know which one. All we know is that we are Jewish. That's what is important. I hope that with God's help the redemption will come and with it the ingathering of the tribes. Then we'll know which tribe we belong to. Until then we identify with the tribe of Judah. <laughs> If by my laws you walk and my commandments you guard and do them, I will give your rain in due season. And you shall eat your bread to the full and you will dwell in your land safely and I will be your God and you shall be my people. I am God, your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, that you shall not be slaves to them. And I have broken the bonds of your yoke that you may go upright. Back in Bukhara, it seems that the Nephtalites, a once mighty tribe of rulers, have been reduced to a tiny community of a few thousand who did not flee after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Once, you could find these people in dozens of towns dotting the area. Now, there are only a few isolated Bukharan Jewish enclaves, including this one, in the jewel of Central Asia, Samarkand, a city with a history dating back more than 2,500 years. Khand in the local dialect means city. Samarkand translates as the city of the Sumerians. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. <laughs> <laughs> 